great. Sounds good. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to the Arts Education Conference, Rest and Renew. Thank you for joining us here for Creative Connections with Frank Ketta Martori, Dr. Janae Jenkins, and Leo Park. So here is a reminder of the values that we that have informed this conference and what we'd like to uphold today. Take a moment to choose a value or values that you'd like to focus on in this session or throughout the day. So now I'm pleased to introduce you to Frank, who will be leading the group in an interdisciplinary lesson focused on social emotional learning, art, music, color, and emotions. Thank you all. Frank. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank uh, Katamatori. I uh, teach at a charter school called CACS Serving Park. Um, and I'm going to get us started here today. We have three presenters. Um, so I'm going to try my best to be mindful of time. Uh, so the Leo, who's going to be at the end, doesn't get kind of shortchanged. But the idea here behind the all of our presentations is you guys are making connections with music, arts, SEL, uh, and kind of like putting them all together. Um, so all the of all the attendees here, right, some of you guys are music teachers, some of you are art teachers, some of you are neither. Uh, and so hopefully, no matter what you do at your school, you're able to like find a little bit of nugget, something that you can take away from this presentation. Uh, my presentation, is uh, on the color of music and it's with uh, Vasily Kandinsky, uh, but it's very meandering and it's gonna be all over the place. Oh, uh, real quick, sorry, back to my other slide. Uh, we just, quit, uh, if you have a question, we're gonna have some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, you can drop it in the chat and then we'll like stack them in order and whatever time we have left at the end, we'll address it. We'll also share all of our contact info uh, in materials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, whatever you guys need, we'll get to you eventually. But like I said, time's going to be a little bit short. So if we don't get to your question, we will get to it. Just maybe not within this hour. Okay. All right. Uh, Vasily Kandinsky, basically, here's the quick out. Oh, let me start my timer. Uh, here's the quick outline and overview of what I'm going to be doing. But the long and short of it is that with remote teaching, I was trying a ton of different stuff in my music classroom, right? Instead of, you know, the typical uh, uh, lesson. And we were just, instead of like playing music, we were making a lot more connections. And I ended up with all of these different uh, lessons where we were like connecting emotions and feelings and stuff to music like that. And I, I wanted to put them all together into like a big cohesive unit. And so we're going to be walking through a bunch of different materials. I did this as a week-long unit with K through two students. That's how my schedule is at my school. I teach the same class every day for a week. Um, but I would say there's a, a bunch of materials here that you can use in the music classroom, art classroom, SEL classroom, or whatever. Um, and so we'll get started with the color song. And if you know anything about little kids, you know that they all have a favorite color probably more than one favorite color. Uh, and this is like a really fun song. If you're not a music teacher, you can just use the video. If you are, you can play it. It goes, this is the color song. Come on and sing along. Even if you sing it wrong, sing it loud and sing it strong. At the end of every line, say a color that might rhyme. There's a few we might not know. It gets harder as we go. When I see the color, I feel new when I see the color. I stay in bed when I see the color. This is the color song. Come on and sing along. Even when you sing it wrong, sing it loud and sing it strong. At the end of every line, say the color that might rhyme. There's a few we might not know. It's harder as we go. I call the pilot when I see violet. It's no big deal when I see teal. 
I feel old when I see gold. This one's a stretch. I think of Wilbur when I see silver. So you can melt that song for all it's worth. Um, if you can sing it, you can make up your own rhymes and keep it going forever. My students loved it. I ended up singing it pretty much every day, especially the little kids. Once they know the answers, they, they, they just want to hear it again and again and again so they can say the right answer. Uh, so that's a great uh, introduction kind of to the unit here, talking about colors, talking about what's your favorite color. You have strong feelings towards specific colors. That's great. There's the links. Uh, oh, I'm going to share the slide deck at the end. All the videos and links and everything are going to be in it. So if you want to use it, they're all there. Um, then I will pivot sort of to like one of these stories. Colors have feelings too. Color Monster is a really great story. I'm going to reference it a couple of times during this presentation. Uh, he is a monster. And when he has different emotions, he turns different colors. And he's trying to sort through his feelings and his colors. Like when he's angry, he's red. When he's sad, he's blue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a great way to make a connection between feelings uh, and colors. And so if the color monster, you know, turns colors when he feels a certain way, we're making connections here between colors and feelings. Uh, I have a great clip of Ratatouille here. Gusto was right. Oh, mm, yeah. Oh, amazing. Each flavor was totally unique. But combine one flavor with another, and something new was created. Ah, I brought you something to. Ah! No, 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 no! Spit that out right now! All right, so when Ratatouille eats foods, what, what happened to Ratatouille? Um, and basically, I sort of lead my students through a discussion of like how when he's tasting foods, the, he, the music changes and he sees these shapes and he sees these colors, right? What color does he see when he eats the cheese? What color does he see when he eats the strawberry, right? It's very visual. It's easy for them to make connections that like, oh, when he eats the cheese, he sees a yellow color. When he sees the strawberry, he sees a red color. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because Vasily Kandinsky is a person who has the exact same condition here as uh, uh, Ratatouille <laughs> called synesthesia, which is a, is a real thing. So I know Ratatouille is a cartoon rat, but uh, when he would taste food, he would see colors, but when Vasily Kandinsky would hear music, he had the same thing. He would see colors. So to him, sounds in instruments would have a distinct color when they played music and all, you know, reverse, the colors would have a specific sound. And we explore this talking about Kandinsky. This story right here, it linked, it, the noisy paint box is a story about his life, but it's also about his condition and about how every time he opens his paint box, it's like a music box with sounds and music and everything coming out. Um, and then I will tie it in with the Chrome Music Lab. They have a game called Kandinsky. It's not really a game, but it's a really fun site. My kids loved it. Um, you basically create musical pictures using it. So I'll be like, let's explore what this is like, right? This artist had this this phenomenon, so when he would see a color, it had a sound, and when he would see a shape, it had a sound, and so when he would draw art, when he would create art, the art also was like a piece of music to him, and that's exactly what happens in this app. Um, if you don't know about Chrome Music Lab, it's super great, uh, but the colors have different sounds, the shapes have different sounds, the size is going to change their sounds, how high or low I think it even is. Um, and so it's great. The only downside is you can't save. There's no like link for kids to save their drawings. So I would have them maybe share it out in class, share their screens or whatever, however you're teaching. Um, so that's my, my big push right now. We have established, do my youngest, oh, I'll Q and A at the end, sorry, bad habit. Uh, but my younger students have iPads, but you could use it on Chromebooks or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so we've successfully made a lot of connections now between music and sound and art and colors uh, and feelings. And so I'm gonna walk through like a couple different options of how you could explore this, whether you're an art class or whether you're trying to do an SEL lesson in your homeroom or you're a music teacher or whatever. Like I said, I'm a K, I'm a elementary school music teacher. I did this with my little kids. Um, one of the options that we did was draw our feelings. And so uh, we watched this video. It was a YouTube art lesson I found. This is a painter by the name of Vasily Kandinsky. Of course, him. He focused a lot on color. Of course, color is just one of the elements of art. And in his work, Kandinsky was really focused on all the elements. And he used a variety of not just colors, but also shapes. He thought about how geometric shapes, like squares, rectangles, triangles, those neat and precisely defined shapes, as well as organic shapes, the curvy, irregular shapes we see in nature, could work together to create a harmonious composition. He also focused on the element of line. We see lots of different types of line designs in his work. For okay. this is a painter by the so. I mean, that's, and they touch more on this in the uh, noisy paint box, which was just the storybook with the a concept, the idea of abstract art. He talks about how he doesn't want to paint a tree or a house that he wants to explore his feelings and he's painting his feelings. Uh, and we also know about the color monster who turns colors when he has feelings, right? When he's happy, he turns yellow. When he's sad, he turns blue. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be drawing our feelings here we're going to be drawing how we're feeling. Um, so we're going to be using, like the video said, different lines, different colors, different shapes to do this activity. Uh, since it's music class, though, we're going to be listening to a little bit of music while we do it. Maybe the music is going to be ha having you feel happy, or maybe the music will make you feel sad, or maybe the music will make you feel, I don't know, angry. Hopefully not angry, but um, so let's take in real life, all the participants here in this chat will take just about a few minutes. Uh, I have I'm doing pretty good on time, I think, to draw our feelings right now. So if you have anything around you, if you have pens, markers, crayons, anything is going to be good. If you only have a pencil, that's okay. Remember, we talked about weights of lines, how heavy they are, thick, thin, geometric shapes, organic shapes. Uh, let me see. Chat is open. If you guys want to just drop a number in the chat, one, two, or three, that'll be the song that we listen to as we draw our feelings. I did this with my students. I have a couple drawings here we've made. Very beautiful. These were things that I had laying around still. Um, so, uh, right, I see a couple numbers in the chat. The last number I see is the song I'll play here in five, four, three, two, one freeze all right nestor is in with number three so take a minute we're gonna be thinking about the music thinking about our feelings what colors do we want to use what shapes do we want to use do we want to use thin lines, thick lines, straight shapes, curvy shapes? We have about one minute left on our drawings.
song was making me feel calm, and the color monster was calm, he was green. I'm gonna try and add some green to my color. Some of us might not be done, but that's okay. Let's start to wrap up our drawings here in 10 seconds. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna hold up my drawing to the camera here. And I would like all my friends in this class to hold up their drawings to the camera. We're gonna just share our creations. If we had more time, I could have students share out their individual creations talk about why they drew the shapes that they drew, the colors that they drew, et cetera, et cetera. And you can repeat this as many times as you want. Um, and that's a great activity. Uh, a couple other options that I had was I tied emotions to sort of inside out the movie where they have the emotions that they're feeling. These are some links here. Uh, it's like a YouTube where, oh, I forgot to turn chat back on. Sorry if you had typed a question in the chat and I had it turned off. I apologize. Uh, some of the links here are to video where they show a scenario from the movie and you guess how the character's feeling. And then these are links to, I did the activity in, in, in Seesaw. I use Seesaw. If you not, this is like a link to some of the songs. But basically, I had students listening to a song and then circling their emotion what we're just going to do is drop a number in the chat. You could do that as well. Uh, so I'll just play a quick song. You pop a number in the chat. Tell me how this song is making you feel. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. And so um, you can, I have a, a bunch of songs that I'll have students, they choose, I color code them, or you could give them letters, what song you listen to, and then they circle how it made them feel. Um, I have them do this. You could do this together as a class. You could have it async, whatever you want. Um, and then, oh, there's my timer. All right, I'm almost done. An option, I didn't do this. But I was just thinking if you have older kids or if you really wanted to like have this be with a more SEL bet, um, you could have them choose a song that they like, like, talk about what they think the mood or the intention of the song is, citing evidence from the song as to why it might feel that way. Uh, like I said, I did this with K through two. Kindergarten, they don't, they don't have songs that they like really, other than songs you sing in class. So I wouldn't do this activity with my little kids, but if you wanted to do this with older kids, um, you could do that as well. So uh, a couple of resources here. Like I said, I've actually taught these lessons with my students. I just uploaded on my PowerPoints and worksheets and stuff in the drive. If you want to grab them, um, there they are. The, uh, I also have a quick teacher's guide, how to walk through the lesson and this exact slide deck. Like I said, remember all the books and everything and videos are linked. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's my connection between music and art and color and feelings and sound. Um, thank you, Lube, for dropping that in the chat. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me or, or uh, ask them at the end. But I want to, um, don't wanna take up any more time because we have two more phenomenal presentations. Uh, Dr. Janae Jenkins is next. Uh, you ready, Janae? ready all right all right hello everyone making sure i'm sharing my screen and it's good to see everyone my name is janae jenkins and i do teach general music and band at pritzker elementary and i'm going to present my screen I think everyone can see. Yes. Awesome. And um, like I said, I do teach general music and band at Pritzker Elementary, and I love to integrate music language arts 
and often social studies as well. So today I will be modeling a way to use haikus while examining um, the aquarium piece by Camille Sanson. So we'll go ahead and get started. So basically the objectives here is really just to um, experience a way of integrating music and language arts and also describing and discussing musical characteristics, but mostly we want to enjoy the beautiful piece of um, this piece, Aquarium. So I'm gonna do this by um, first defining the haiku. And this is basically, I'm taking you through what I would do with my students. I would first define the haiku and then explain the activity, give you five to seven minutes to create your own haiku and then um, maybe hopefully hear from some of you that might want to share your haiku. So a haiku quickly is a three line poem that originated in the Japanese culture. The first and third lines have five syllables. The second one, one in the middle has seven syllables. Now haiku does not have to rhyme and um, it's usually based on some type of nature thing. So in this activity, you will pick an underwater slide. I'm giving you eight options. So you would just choose one and on each slide, there are prompts that are provided for you. So the prompts might um, focus on musical characteristics or characteristics of an ecosystem, um, maybe the feelings that are portrayed in the piece. So you will create a haiku um, to, on one of those slides. Once you create your haiku, you will add the pictures, some pictures. There are pictures that are available in the margins. All you have to do is drag and drop them over and you can um, have some pictures added to your slide along with your haiku. So once you do that, you might wanna read through it, um, read through it out loud or, si or silently, um, whatever your preference. But I would encourage you to play the soundtrack. On each slide, there is a, um, there is a speaker button so that you can play the piece aquarium while you read your poem. So then once you've done that, um, after five or so minutes, maybe um, some of you would like to share, share with the group. So here, I'll just go through the different options um, that, you, that are available. These are the options. And then feel free to choose one. Maybe you want to just start from scratch, not using any of the prompts. You can use this one. So now I will set the timer for five minutes and then as well, I will um, start the recording. If we need extra time, you can feel free to let me know and let's get started.
and I'll play it one more time. So, um, does anyone need more time? Is there anyone that might be willing to share? So, as the, I'll go ahead and stop the timer. Well, give us 10 more seconds. So now, is there anyone, let's go ahead to the next slide. If there's anyone that, I can't see the chat, so I'm not sure if there's someone that said they needed more time, but feel free to let us know. Okay, we're good to go. So is there anyone that is um, willing to go ahead and share your, your haiku? And if you are, you can just drop your name in the chat or you can just unmute and say your name but um, we would love for you to share, share your haiku and you can even play the music behind. Um, I, would, I would usually encourage my students to try to read slowly and not rush through it, just to enjoy the experience of the haiku, also enjoy the music as it plays. Anyone? Jonathan? Yeah, right. I don't have any music with mine, but I thought my haiku was kind of cool. Okay. So, swim silent sea, away awash foam eaten, pray, pray food eaten. Thank you. It's awesome. Awesome. Yes, yeah, snaps and claps. Thank you. Thank you for that. Shanae, we have a couple in the chat. Okay. So uh, Kelly uh, said Friday, end of quarter. Whoops. And then Michael asked if you can share next. I'm All right. Nevada. I'm going to see if I can play the, play the, uh, play the recording. Uh, never mind. Go ahead. I'll, um, Lillian, since you can see the names, can you go ahead and, um, sure. Can... Michael will go first and then Charlie will be on deck. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. There's a little background noise. Um, I'll begin the haiku. I touch the cool sand, press fingers in and push off and rise to the sun. Nice, thank you so much. 
that's awesome. And I appreciate the, um, the slow tempo that you, that you both have read. Um, it really helps the calmness. It helps us, it allows us to really enjoy and listen to your words and the meanings. All right, who's next? Charlie is next and then Trevor is on deck. And then Janae, uh, can we have one more? Cause we have one more that yep. I'd like to share. Yep. Okay, one, okay, great, thank you. Go ahead, Charlie. Hi, thanks. Um, how the coral thrives, be the ocean, not the wave. In the depths you breathe. Nice, thank you so much. Snaps and claps for sure. And I, I just wanna encourage you guys to think about, and I'm sure you are, but think about um, the music of Aquarium and how it would fit as background to um, what you're saying and also how your students would be able to appreciate um, hearing the music and getting more familiar with the music as it's heard, okay? How many do we have time for? Um, we definitely have time for two. Okay, so Trevor is next and then E. Mangrum is on deck. And then okay. that will be the last one. For those that also aren't volunteered, feel free to drop your haiku in the chat so we can kind of share in your experience and, and what you have to have. Forgive me for riffing. It felt easier to sit at the piano than to figure out the tech to play the audio over me, so. Inviting cold, peace away from injustice, called to stay, not go. Thank you. Nice. Appreciate that and appreciate you playing the piano um, along with it. Awesome. And you said one more, Lillian? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time accessing the slide. All I can see is like the optional share out. So I don't know what I did with the slide deck where I um, typed my haiku at, I'm trying to find it. Okay. Do you need to um, press escape and that might take you back? Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, thanks, that helped. Okay. okay let me find the uh, slide deck that I wrote it on. I'm having the hardest time finding, okay, there it is. Okay, it says, okay, I can't play the um, music, but it says, glistening waters, billowing softly, tranquil, carries me away. Nice, thank you, snaps and claps. So thank you to all of you that did um, share out and um, I so appreciate that. And so I just want to um, encourage you to incorporate haikus. There's so many ways you can use haikus um, this way, but also um, when we were in person, when I was in person with my students, we used um, physical instruments, percussion instruments to um, just accentuate certain words that, um, that we put in our haiku. So that would also ex, um, expose the students to different types of instruments and the textures of different types of percussion instruments and how to actually play the different instruments. So I hope this was helpful. Um, let's see, we have just some, um, spread the word to, for the conference, you know, about the conference, just what you've experienced, some of your takeaways. And I will um, pass this on over to Leo. Leo, are you ready? Good morning, everyone. Hope you all are well. Give me one second while I get the slide deck up. Can everyone see that? Great, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, hope you all are well. Um, for those of you who are elementary school teachers, I hope this past month has been okay for you. I know it's been very challenging. As a high school educator, uh, we're experiencing what uh, you experienced about a month ago as, as, you, as you were transitioning to uh, hybrid. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of juggling uh, 
quite a few balls right now and spinning quite a few plates right now as I try to get uh, my room situated and, and, and try and create a, a space that uh, is conducive to not only in-person learning, but also to, to equitably distribute my time to uh, the, the students who understandably um, are also staying remote. Um, Anyway, again, my name is Leo Park. I am a music educator at Northside College Prep High School, 20-year uh, music educator veteran uh, here in CPS. And my portion of uh, the workshop today is not hands-on, so I do want to apologize in advance for that. Uh, but, but it is focused on uh, sound and music for self-care, for your self-care, and subsequently, your student self-care. You know, I had a professor, a uh, music ed professor who would always say, listen, you can't expect to take care of your students unless you can take care of yourself first, right? And that uh, that has always rung true. It's, it's incredibly important that we uh, care for ourselves. Uh, those of you who are parents understand this, right? Uh, and of course, our, our teachers who aren't parents understand this within the, uh, the, the, the classroom experience. But taking care of ourselves first and foremost will und undoubtedly pay dividends in terms of how we're able to care for our students. <clears throat> so specifically, this session will focus on sound and music as a source of engagement and self-care. Uh, and as I mentioned, consequently, student care. Uh, we'll survey research and consider three ways in which you can use sound, mu sound and music. I'm sorry, I need to move this Zoom thing out of the way so that I can actually read uh, the slide deck. We'll survey research and consider three ways in which you can use sound and music as a tool for healing your mind, body, and soul. Those three ways or those three engagements uh, include listening, music making, and attending concerts. Let's start with intentional listening. Listening to the music you love makes your brain release more dopamine, a crucial neurotransmitter for humans' emotional and cognitive functioning. This is based on re research from Laura Ferrari, cognitive psychologist from Lyon University. Uh, again, I'm gonna throw some research at you because you know, of course, in the last 20, 30 some odd years, uh, quite a wealth of research has come about uh, as it relates to music and its positive effects on our health, both physically, emotionally, uh, cognitively, so on and so forth. Uh, research from Don Kuhn, a music therapist at Willamette University, shows that listening to music has been shown to reduce stress by reducing the amount of the stress hormone cortisol in the body. Research published in the Journal of Ergonomics proves that listening to music while sitting in traffic can improve your mood, which is add-on benefits for the rest of the day, like arriving at work relaxed and ready to dive into your to-do list. For me, sometimes I need to throw on some, some WC in the morning just to clear my mind, right? Uh, believe it or not, if I'm stuck in traffic on Lakeshore Drive, I might actually put on some Pantera because I'm so just like worked up and energetic that I need to bang my head to get that energy out. Uh, so yes, listening to music and traffic can improve your mood. Uh, Harvard Medical School neurologist Mary Forgard, her research suggests that making the music you love a part of your life increases IQ and academic performance. So in terms of intentional listening, what can you do to leverage it after this conference as a means for engaging in self-care? Perhaps curating or seeking out playlists on Spotify, YouTube, or the streaming service you subscribe to, that might be an option. Uh, if you don't stream, you can certainly consider pulling out some of your old albums uh, or burning a playlist onto a CD. Who still burns CDs? I don't know, maybe some of you, but... Um, Streaming seems to be the, the, the mode of, 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 of music um, uh, reception, if you will. Uh, so if you do subscribe to some music streaming services, uh, certainly curating playlists or seeking out playlists that these services have already uh, curated for you, uh, those are some options. Um, of course, finding some time to identify music from various stages of your life is incredibly important. You know, I grew up in Chicago, so house music was a really big thing, you know, back in, well, I'm not that old, but in the 80s, house music was still a big thing. Of course, it was big in the 70s as well. Um, but I do remember those B96, um, you know, 
Friday, Saturday night mixes, uh, whether it was Julian Jump and Perez or Bad Boy Bill, I often tell my students that uh, the reason why I'm really rhythmically sound, like I, I can hold a beat really, really, really well, is because I grew up listening to house music, which of course was a specific BPM and it would never digress from that BPM, right? So those were some very formative musical uh, experiences that I had growing up that still, um, that I still connect with today. Uh, and I do still need to head to the um, the uh, the city of Chicago House Music Festival that the awesome David Chavez and, and uh, others at DKs have been curating for the last several years. Um, it's it's always a great time. Um, what about the music discoveries you made in high school? You know, I remember the day that our English teacher uh, assigned an assignment in which we were to choose a piece of music and um, write about it and then present it to the class. Uh, that was mind blowing to me back in the early 90s. That had never happened in elementary school. And I remember Sam Reback bringing in Jessica from the Allman Brothers Band. And I'd heard, you know, like Blue Sky, uh, you know, uh, maybe a whipping post or something on the radio. But Jessica, my mind was blown sitting in the back of that English class, hearing that beautiful instrumental. I remember it very clearly and it opened up uh, musical doors for me to, to connect to. Uh, and I still love the Almond Brothers uh, band to a T. So the question is, what is it about these musics that affected you, right? And when you can sit down and, and take the time to try and make those connections, you're essentially creating a, a, a collection of, of therapies, if you will that could allow you to center your self-care through music. Intentional listening, identify music that you've always had an interested interest in becoming more familiar with. Seek it out and make or find a playlist. Uh, you know, shoegaze music, right? I didn't really grow up with it. I wasn't really all that into it in high school, but it's been something that I've been really, really enjoying uh, as of late. Um, you know, whether it's, electronic dance music, whether it's Danish jazz, whether it's bluegrass or old time, whether it's metal, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of genres of music that you have not spent considerable amount of time mining, if you will, or experiencing. Uh, well, give it a try, make some room for it. And um, you know, you never know what you might be turned to. Download onto your smartphone uh, the Intune application. It's, uh, it's a free app that aggregates radio stations and podcasts from all over the world. Save those stations that specialize in specific types of music so that you are readily available to access them when you're just feeling like you need to listen to KCRW, right? Uh, when you need to listen to Morning Becomes Electic, Eclectic. These are all radio stations not based in Chicago, but they have streams that you could aggregate through the Intune app. You know, the other thing is this right here, this is, uh, this is my Bluetooth earbuds. And I know it seems really like arcane because there's a wire. Uh, I don't like the wireless ones because when I take them off, I have to put them in my pocket, which I lose time when I have to pull it out of my pocket, stick it in my ear. This thing is forever wrapped around my neck because if I need to listen to something, I just need some music therapy. Bam, right here, turn it on, pull out my phone, turn on Intune, Spotify, roll through my playlists. Uh, this morning I was listening to singing bowls with some, some nature sounds uh, to just get me relaxed um, at the beginning of the day. Um, so find those pieces of hardware, like your Bluetooth headphones, make sure they're readily available to you. Um, make sure you have those apps, whether it's Spotify or in this case, Intune, readily available because again, Music is medicine, music is therapy, and you want medicine and therapy readily available to you. Do a little research on your car radio and satellite stations. Uh, there, we're in Chicago, there is a lot out there. Um, all of my presets in my car are taken. Uh, in fact, there aren't enough presets in my car. Um, but yeah, find some time uh, to do a little research on the radio stations that are available to you. If you subscribe to satellite, you have hundreds upon hundreds of stations. Uh, figure out what works for you. Um, earlier, we were talking about uh, what music can do when you're in traffic, when you're in your car, right? Preset those uh, radio stations. If you're in need of classical, you've got that set to preset two. If you're in need of old time bluegrass, preset three. Funk soul, preset five. Old school hip hop, preset eight. Whatever it might be, 
that you may be in need of at any given time. Consider using the Pandora application to ease yourself into or out of a mood or emotion. Uh, Pandora actually began as the Music Genome Project. The Music Genome Project. Those three words juxtaposed against each other is enough for me to, what is going on here? What is this really interesting thing? And it certainly is a, a, a very interesting thing. Uh, in a nutshell, it's a protocol that filters a song through approximately 450 objective musical genes or attributes that a team of musicologists analyzed to curate playlists for Pandora. Uh, there is a, a hyperlink to a New York Times article about Pandora and the Music Genome Pro, uh, Project. So uh, check that out when you get a chance. Uh, consider sound-based intentional listening. You know, we've been talking about music. Uh, what about sound, right? Singing bowls. I was just mentioning that this morning I was listening to singing bowls uh, interspersed with, with sounds of nature, birds chirping, uh, you know, kind of a light sort of rumbling thunder in the background, uh, uh, a really hard rain, uh, ocean waves crashing up against the shore. Uh, all of that stuff just kind of transports me. Uh, and, and sort of clears my mind and, and, and kind of uh, sort of cleanses my, my body of, of, you know, maybe some negative things that may have been percolating in the last week or so uh, during the stress of, of transitioning to a uh, hybrid in person. Uh, binaural beats is something, uh, there's some research on binaural beats. It has to do with sound waves, uh, specific sound waves being fed into your left ear through headphones and, uh, and adjust its sound wave ever so slightly uh, in your right ear. Um, there is some research around it. It isn't extensive. It's, it, it works for me. Again, it's kind of like, uh, you know, what would you call it? Sort of a, a placebo type thing. Um, whatever works for you. Uh, it certainly works for me. I've got uh, an app on my phone. It's free. It's called Binaural. And um, it lists uh, the, the different brain waves, the um, the, the, the bottom and the ceiling of, of what a meditative brain wave would be like, what a deep sleep brain wave would be like. Um, and uh, they adjust the, the sound waves to that to get your brain to, to sort of react and adjust. Uh, again, checking out binaural beats is something that you might want to uh, do. Um, we're gonna hold off on suggestions regarding things that you've been doing. Uh, I just wanna get through the presentation first and we'll see what happens. Uh, but if you do have suggestions, hang on to them so that uh, you could share them with us at the end of, of, of this portion of the workshop. Let's move on to music making. Music making. So science has shown that musical training can change brain structure and function for the better, which is important, of course. It can also improve long-term memory and lead to better brain development for those who start at a young age. Simon Landry, researcher at the University of Montreal, found that musicians have faster auditory tactile and audio tactile reaction times. Musicians also have an altered statistical use of multi-sensory information. This means that they're better at integrating the inputs from various sen senses. If you haven't already done so, there's this incredible TED Ed video about the positive effects that music, ha music making has on the brain. It has over 10 million views. I've hyperlinked it here. I show it at the start of every school year to my students. I show it at every back to school night. And you know, we always need that reminder of, of what music is doing scientifically, medically, uh, physiologically uh, to our bodies um, in, in a positive manner. Uh, longitudinal studies uh, have suggested that children who do 14 months of musical training displayed more powerful structure and functional brain changes. You know, um, Gustavo Dudamel, he is the uh, principal conductor of the LA Philharmonic. Uh, he came to us by way of this incredible uh, music program, uh, uh, a socially sort of um, centered uh, government supported music program out of Venezuela called El Sistema. When he came to the United States and he was appointed as, as director of LA Phil, he wanted to start a program in LA. And um, I'm blanking on the name of this, this uh, youth organization, this, this youth music organization, but they partnered up with some universities and they are in the midst of a longitudinal study, study based on inner city LA youth who are engaging in long-term music at formal music education, um, experiences and comparing it to, unfortunately, those who aren't getting uh, those formal music education experience. So I'm really excited to see what their findings will be. 
um, once they're published. These studies prove that learning a musical instrument increases gray matter volume in various brain regions. Again, fMRI machines, so helpful uh, these days in, in us being able to, to, to capture such data. Um, it also strengthen, strengthens the long range connections between them. Additional research shows that musical training can enhance verbal memory, spatial reasoning, and literacy skills. Quote, music reaches parts of the brain that others, other things can't. It's a strong cognitive stimulus that grows the brain in a way that nothing else does. And the evidence that musical training enhances things like working memory and language is very robust. This is a quote from Catherine Loveday, neuropsychologist at the University of Westminster. So a few more positive implications for music making um, that comes from music making, I should say. Uh, it strengthens bonds with others. If you play in a band, if you play in a string chord, Quartet, a brass quartet, a symphony orchestra, a church choir. These social musical interactions, they strengthen bonds. Uh, it strengthens and builds memory and reading skills. Playing music makes you happy. Musicians can process multiple things at once. Music increases blood flow in your brain. It helps the brain recover. It reduces stress and depression. A musical training strengthens the brain's executive function. So what can you do after this conference that leverages music making as a means for engaging in self-care? Well, learn an instrument you've always wanted to, but just never had time or motivation to. I'll tell you what, this pandemic has me playing more electric bass than I've ever played in my life, more guitar than I've ever played in my life. And it's given me some time to stay connected with my violin, no doubt. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to explain these things that I just never sort of centered or prioritized. Um, I encourage you to, to do the same. Uh, yes, you'll have to have a budget for lessons and classes, but the return on your investment is self-care, right? Uh, peruse the Old Town School of Folk Music website or other music schools that offer adult music classes. Again, back to that quote from my professor, center yourself, care for yourself first, so that you can care for, for your littles, whether they're your children or your children in your classroom. And of course, as I mentioned, church choir, right? If you're religious, perhaps your worship community has a choir or ensemble that you can get involved in. Other things, if you're already a musician or if you did play an instrument when you were younger, what can you do? Etch out some time during the week to practice, to jam, to perform both individually and communally. Look into lessons or seek out online lessons or online courses. There are a lot of online courses these days. Um, you know, obviously we're all stretched thin. If you can't get to, you know, private lessons or small group lessons at your local music school, seek out some online courses. Uh, we talked about communal music making, right? Check out the 63rd Street, Street Beach Drum Circle. They've been, they've been at it, I want to say, since like the 80s, possibly the 70s. They've been doing their thing for decades now. Uh, and it's just a community of, of folk who drum and dance. It's, it's, it's a pretty beautiful thing. Um, there's also the full moon jam that usually takes place at Foster Beach uh, during the warmer months. It's a communal drumming and fire spinning celebration. Um, obviously uh, with uh, the pandemic, you know, things uh, aren't running as regularly as, as they would. So check out their websites to see how you can connect with these two incredible organizations. Uh, let's move to attending concerts. Let's move to attending concerts. Uh, attending a musical performance is, uh, attending a musical performance decreases the release of cortisol and other stress hormones, according to a study by researchers from Imperial College London published in the journal Public Health. The physiologic result of attending a concert is a decrease in heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate, quoted by Dr. Narev Mehta, cardiologist at Cardiology Consultants of Philadelphia. Studies have shown that listening to music before, during, and after surgery has an analgesic effect on patients. The same holds true for people who attend concerts. Analgesic uh, pain, right? Uh, it has an effect on pain, a positive effect on pain. It relieves pain. The same holds true for people who attend concerts, says Dr. Steven Eisenberg, an oncologist, rheumatologist, and internal medicine specialist based near San Diego. When you're excited at a concert, your brain releases endorphins, neurotransmitters that block pain. 
listening to the music you love can increase your pain threshold. Yes, listening through headphones is one thing, but you see that live in concert, the palpable energy from the stage, the fans around you, everyone there for one reason, to connect with each other, the music, and the band, or the ensemble, or the choir. Attending concerts, making the effort to get to a concert and enjoying the music with thousands of other people is a positive communal event that makes you feel connected to other people, which is good for your mental outlook and longevity, Eisenberg says. You're with your tribe and you did what you had to do in order to get there, whether it was lining up a babysitter, paying exorbitant ticket prices, or fighting traffic, Eisenberg says. You feel better if you are connected to other people, including people at a concert. Back when live music was still going, I had to make it a point to get to at least two music performances a month. It was something that provided me with the, the type of, of music therapy that I needed. Um, we're getting there as this pandemic slowly sort of makes its way to uh, hopefully a place where we can live alongside it uh, in a safe manner. Listening to a favorite band or singer perform specific tunes can take you back to the time in your life when you first heard those songs, which helps you relive joy, innocence, disappointment, sadness, regret, fury from that period. Says Thomas Bowden, an associate professor of religion at Fordham University who's written several books on music religion. It's an opportunity to revisit something inside of you and think about where you are with that emotion now. It's almost like what you do in therapy, exactly. Between walking to and from the concert venue, jumping up and down during the show, and maybe even dancing to one of your favorite tunes, you might exercise as much as if you'd spent 30 minutes on a treadmill. You may be moving half the time you're at a concert. You're getting in shape and not even realizing it. You know that you've really had a workout. If the next morning after a concert, you have some sore arms, your legs are sore, your neck is sore from bobbing your head, uh, that's a good thing. You've definitely uh, burned some calories and engaged in some exercise, which, as we know, is good for you. People who regularly attend musical performances have a higher feeling of well-being than those who don't, according to a study by researchers at Deakin University in Australia. The researchers interviewed 1,000 people to gain insight into the relationship between their engagement with music and sense of well-being. The findings revealed that engaging with music by dancing or attending musical events was associated with a higher sense of well-being than for those who did not engage with music in these forms. I think even without this study, I think we all could recognize that this is how the study would have sort of uh, panned out, right? We understand what attending live music can do. And, uh, you know, again, your self-care, your attending of these concerts, your identifying the, the value of attending concerts to your health and well-being will eventually and subsequently spill to what you do in the classroom, uh, encouraging your students and their families to go out and prioritize their self-care by going to performances and attending concerts. Uh, so what Thanks, can Leo, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have one minute left in this session. So um, if you wanna take 10 seconds to wrap up your thoughts and then we'll, we, there are a couple of questions that were elevated in the chat before we, and then a couple of resources we wanna share with the Absolutely. before we move on. I, I Thanks, sincere, Leo. My sincere Thank apologies. You. So, you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic, but certainly venues are starting to reopen with restricted capacity. Summer's approaching, Ravinia uh, has announced their summer concert season. And my contact at Deep Case tells me that the city of Chicago will be moving forward. They will be moving forward with programming summer concerts at Pritzker Pavilion. So these are some opportunities. Um, my go-to for concert listings is the Chicago Reader. You can filter the listings out by date and genre. So if you're feeling hip hop on June 10th, filter it out by hip hop, find those concerts on June 10th, and there you go. Uh, feeling classical, filter that out. Find a concert to go to. Time Out Chicago, do, do 312. Those are other um, online um, portals that you can check out. And of course, there are married of block parties and uh, you know the communal centered front porch series uh, concerts here in Chicago. Um, so three things to center your self care in terms of music and sound: uh, intentional listening, um, music making, attending concerts. Thank you. All you, Lillian. Thank you so much.
Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I think Holly was doing going to do this. Do you want me to pass it to you and wrap up or do you want me to just wrap up? Yeah, just, just go ahead, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, it, we've got this a couple of times. I'm going to drop in the chat um, two resources. Oh, it looks like Lou Barry dropped them in. So the one page session handout has all of the slide decks and resources that were hyper hyperlinked in the slide decks in that one page handout. Um, the conference brochure has the join links for the next session that you will be joining in the, in about nine minutes. Um, and then if when you join the closing session, you will need your unique join link to join the closing session. I think I got everything. Uh, facilitators and, and room monitors, please let me know if I missed anything. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us. This was magical. I appreciated all of the facilitation 